Hi everyone, it's Niall from amstradnoob.com and today we're going to take a look at how we can use the diagnostics feature of the Dandinator and load them with Amstrad specific diagnostics by Noel from Noel's Retro Lab. So before we get started, I'll point you to amstradnoob.com and if you go there and use the search feature in the right and type in Dan, 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 or Dan Donator, you will see that I wrote a blog post called Programming an Amstrad CPC Dan Donator Mini. And if you click on that, um, it will show you how you can load games and stuff onto the Dan Donator. This is an important thing you need to uh, read about and try because it shows you how to get the serial communication to work between your computer and the Dandinator. And you're gonna need that because in this video, what we're going to do is download the Amstrad Diags from Noel's uh, GitHub and we will, we will load them onto the Dandinator so that we can actually do some RAM tests and see it in action. We'll test it with good RAM, and then we'll substitute one of the RAM chips or one or more of the RAM chips with bad RAM chips and then run it and see what happens. And we're going to run it both on a CPC664 and a 6128. So that's it, let's get started. Okay, so here we have a 6128 with a ROM board um, plugged into the back. And behind that, we've got the Dandinator Mini. The Dandinator Mini is connected via a USB cable to my Windows 10 computer, which is a Surface Book 2. And I've got the EEPROM writer software running on that one. I did do a video explaining how you get that working, so please check that out before you try this as a reminder. But let's just take a quick look at what we have in front of us. The Dandinator uh, that you see here has got the standard RAM test that mine came with. And if I press R just now, you'll see exactly what that looks like. And it shows you these eight uh, green, green lines on either side, which correspond to actually the 64K of RAM, the first 64K of RAM. I don't think this RAM test called the quick and dirty RAM test actually checks the upper RAM at all. So it only checks the first 64K. Uh, if you have a 6128, that doesn't help you a whole lot. So that's another good reason for using Noel's Amstrad Diagnostics. So now that you've seen what the standard quick and dirty RAM test looks like, let's load on Noel's Amstrad Diagnostics. And that's what we're gonna do here. So I've already downloaded the software. This is the one that we need to load onto the Dandinator. It's called Amstrad Dig Lower .rom. And basically start up the, the uh, Dandinator software, go to preferences. And in the preferences, if you select the Dandinator CPC tab, um, you can click on change for the extra ROM and point it to the ROM that you downloaded. And I'll link to that in this video. And here it is, amstragdiaglower.rom. And just point to that and it's really that hard. And also make sure that the COM port uh, in the loader tab is pointing to the COM port of your Dandinator, which in this case is COM7. So let's close preferences now that we've done that. And all we have to do is go back to our CPC. And I'm actually just going to cycle the power. So off and on again. And at the Dandinator screen, I'm going to press L. And that brings up the EEPROM writer that you can see there. And then if we move over to the uh, Windows 10 computer, 
all I have to do is flip these two circles and it should start programming our dandinator and that's exactly what it's doing. So if we look at the CPC, you can see that the, the numbers there are counting up, the blocks are counting up. Now, what you might also see in the background there are two RAM chips on the table and a RAM chip puller. Those two RAM chips are faulty. I know that they're faulty. What we're going to do after we've done a few tests just to show you what the new Amstrad diagnostics look like on a 6128, we're then going to take this one away and have a look at my 664, pull out some good RAM, whack in uh, one uh, bad RAM chip or maybe two and see what the Amstrad diagnostics tells us. Now, a thing to keep in mind when you run the Amstrad diagnostics is that they give you audible feedback as well as video feedback. So when you, when you press the left button on the dandinator, because there are three buttons, the left one, the middle one, and the right one, press and hold the left button when you power on your CPC and it will run the extra ROM, which in this case we're going to load with the Amstrad Diagnostics. When it runs um, the RAM check, it will give you audible feedback. If you get one beep followed by two quick beeps, that means that your RAM tests were okay. If you get one beep followed by three slow beeps, that means that there was a problem with the RAM. So it gives you an audible um, message, so to speak, uh, in case you don't have access to a, a, an LCD or a CRT, in order to tell you that, yeah, that, that Amstrad has got faulty RAM. Now, you may or may not have noticed that the RAM test on the bottom of the Dandinator now has flipped from what it was RAM test to Amstrad Diag lower. So that means that the uh, reprogramming of the Dandinator was successful and now we can test it. Okay, so what we see here is the menu that you will see if the initial RAM check was successful. So in other words, when you power on a CPC and run the Amstrad Diags, it will check the lower RAM to see if it's okay. If there's no problem, it will then present you with this uh, little menu system. And the first option in that menu is one upper RAM. So let's just run that. This is a 6128, so it will check the upper 64K. And then at the bottom of the screen, it will report whether it was successful or not. If it wasn't successful, it will list a bit, which bit was uh, faulty, and you can compare that to a table to determine uh, which, which uh, chip or chips in the upper RAM uh, block are faulty. Bank 1 to bank 7 are extra RAM. For example, if you've got a 256K or 512K RAM pack plugged into the back of your 6128, that's what that is for testing. So let's go back to the menu and the second option there is ROM. So we'll click on that and what that one does is it checks the ROMs inside your CPC, but it also checks ROMs that might be plugged in. For example, I've got a Maxam, Protext and Utopia ROM board plugged into the back of this 6128 and they are listed here in the information displayed in the menu, which is very cool. So the two yellow ROMs that are detected are the BASIC and the AMSDOS ROM that are built into the 6128. So let's go and look at the next option, which is number three. That one allows you to test the keys on whatever uh, CPC you have, which is great because as you press a key, it highlights it on the screen so you can see um, which keys you've pressed or for example, if a key doesn't show up on the screen, then you know that you've got a faulty membrane and you can fix that by replacing the membrane or using conductive uh, paint as I showed you in a previous video. So let's uh, see if we can do this. Control, shift, and return. Good, we can exit out of that. The next option is system info. 
And that basically should list the CRTC type, which is the CRTC chip that is uh, on the motherboard. In this case, it's type Z one. Uh, on my 664, I think it's type zero. What is the final option? The final option is called a soak test, and that's kind of like a, a repeat test that it runs in order to test the RAM and ROMs and, and so on on your CPC. I've had mixed results with this one, but let's just give it a try and see what happens here. So off it goes, checking the ROMs. And then after that, so it's comparing the ROMs and actually doing CR, CRC checks on them. And now it's doing RAM tests. And this is kind of cool because you could use this to, to test um, Amstrad's if you believe that there's a problem. Now, with the soak test, I've seen this on both the 6128 and the 664. It just jumps back to the Dan Donator screen and it shows in a corrupted way. It looks corrupt there. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I wonder if we press R, what happens? Nothing. Yeah, it's locked up. So if I turn it off, and on again, I think it'll, it'll start the soak test again. No, it didn't. Okay, so it's different behavior. Let's run that again and see what happens. Okay, soak iteration 002. So this is what I've seen on the 6128. On the 664, I get a different behavior, which is interesting. But here, as you can see, it's repeating the soak tests. It'll do the RAM test, and then it'll restart and show a Dandon hater screen that's kind of crashed. I've given this feedback already to Noel, and I'm sure he will look into it and fix it. Okay, let's see what else there is. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that Dandonator, plug it into my 664, swap out some RAM chips, and see what it tells us, all right? Okay, so now I've got the 664, opened up because we're going to pull out some chips and I've got the down donator plugged into the back and I want you to pay attention to the audible feedback that the down donator gives you when the RAM is okay. It should give us one beep followed by two quick beeps. That means the RAM is okay and then it should show the, the uh, Amstrad Diag menu. Now we have to press R. There's the two beeps and there's the menu system. Now I can press R because obviously the RAM is okay and I see the Dandonator screen. But if I remove some RAM, which I'm gonna do now, put in some faulty RAM. And then power it on again. We should see a gray square and some, yeah, that gray square means you've got faulty RAM. So now to kick in the Dandonator, we need to press and hold the first button, like so, when we power it on. Listen for the beeps. So there you have it. It gave us three audible beeps, slower beeps, and that tells us there's faulty RAM or there's a fault. And as you can see graphically on the LCD, we have a zero to seven, which uh, basically uh, points to the eight banks of RAM. And the first one is listed as, as faulty. And indeed, that's the one that we swapped out with a known bad chip. So let's power this off again and put in the second faulty chip here and see what happens. So let's press and hold. There's our 
There's our three slow beeps to inform us that there's a round problem. And not only that, look at this. We've got all of the bars showing as if, as if we've got eight uh, faulty RAM chips. We don't, but this second RAM chip is so faulty that when it is in any CPC in conjunction with the other faulty chip, it just gives a signal to the Amstrad Diagnostics that there's a major RAM fault and it shows them all as being faulty. That's really weird, but that's what I see when I have the two of them in. Program your dynamator and start testing RAM using the Amstrad Diagnostics. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you can, please subscribe. Thank you and see you in the next one.